Hello, welcome to this third and final video in this series of videos about L'Hopital's rule. In the first video, we saw how to use it when it applies in the format of zero over zero or infinity over infinity. In the second video, we looked at some other types of indeterminate forms where you have an indeterminate product, zero times infinity, or an indeterminate difference where you have infinity minus infinity. We saved the most difficult for last. Another type of indeterminate form is when you have an indeterminate power. This is the most difficult. The algebra required to get you into a format that is L'Hopital ready is quite involved. On this slide, we explain the algebra, and then on the next two slides, we do two examples. Thank you for watching. My name is Nakaya Rimmer. Let's get started. So, what is an indeterminate power? Zero raised to the zero might not necessarily be zero. Uh, infinity raised to the zero might not necessarily be one. And the most famous of all these, though, is one raised to the infinity. It might not be one. Someone once told you one raised to any power is a one. Well, if that power is a function that's changing and getting very large, it might not be a one. And so let's look at the algebra. It's quite involved. Okay. The purpose, though, is to introduce a natural log. Okay. You see, you have this function who's raised to another function. We've seen this before. We know how to take a derivative of such a function by using logarithmic differentiation. We bring in a log with the goal in mind of getting that exponent out of there and multiply it in front. We're going to do the same thing here. Okay, it's not logarithmic differentiation. It's not that. But we're going to use the property of logs to help us simplify this. With the big goal in mind, getting into L'Hopital ready format. Okay. So let me just explain it in general. So let some variable stand for the limit. My job is to find out what y is. Let's take the natural log of both sides. OK. In taking the natural log of both sides, I want to bring the log inside. As long as it's the limit exists, we can do that. And then. I want to execute the property of logs, which allows me to take whatever's in the exponent and bring it down in front. That's the power rule on logs. What I've just done is I've created a product when I didn't have one before. I had a power, now I have a product. Okay. And in doing this, what will happen is I'll be in the format of infinity times zero or maybe negative infinity times zero. Okay. And so I'm only one step away from being L'Hopital ready. I'm going to need to create a fraction by dividing by the reciprocal of probably G of X. Okay. And you can finish it out from there. Now you have to remember after you're done with that and you get some limit. Okay call it capital L. That's not the answer to your question. You took the natural log. You're looking for Y and what you have in hand is the natural log of Y. To get back into what Y is, you're going to have to take E to both sides. So your limit is E to the L. Okay, we could have formulated this from the very beginning and brought in an E, but um, I decided to go with this route of explaining it. All right, so in general, this is how it works. Now let's see it in action. On an example, x is going to 0. So 1 minus 6x is going to 1. The exponent is 1 over x. 1 over something very small is very big. This is of the format 1 to the infinity. I like to announce what format I'm in so then it, in, it informs me and lets me know what kind of algebra I should take to get to be into L'Hopital ready format. I'm in an indeterminate power and I introduce a y. And then I bring in a log. And then I make that log go inside of the limit. And now I'm here. Why did I bring log in, natural log? So I can bring the 1 over x down in front. Property of logs, log of a to the p is p log a. I actually have a fraction. Doesn't look like it, but I do. I have a fraction. It's natural log of 1 minus 6x on top of x. I didn't have to do the indeterminate product. There's a fraction already ready for me. x goes to 0. 6x goes to 0. Natural log of 1 is 0. 
and the denominator is also going to zero. All of a sudden, you're in zero over zero format, just like that. So what do you do? You execute L'Hopital's rule. What is the derivative of the numerator? One over the inside times the derivative of the inside, negative six. Derivative of the denominator, it's a one. Your new limit is, simplify, don't do another L'Hopital, simplify. It's negative six on top of one minus six X. X goes to zero. So this limit, you don't need L'Hopital again. This limit is negative six. Not the answer to your question. You're looking for Y and what you have is the natural log of Y. Continue to write L and Y so you can remind yourself of that. So E to the left and E to the right. This function as X is headed to zero is headed to E to the negative six. All right. Okay, great. Let's see another example. And it's a famous example. It's um, some people think of it as uh, with special values of A and B, it's the definition of, the, of E. Let's look at the next example. One plus A over X raised to the BX as X goes to infinity. This is at the heart of the matter behind compound interest and being compounded continuously, how you end up with an exponential in the formula. If A and B are both one, this limit is E. And some people use that as the definition of E. Okay, but this limit is going to end up being E to some power. Let's work through it. X goes to infinity. A over X goes to zero. The inside is going to one. It's raised to the B times X and X is going to infinity. So it is of the format one to the infinity. Let y equal the limit, take the natural log of both sides, bring the natural log inside, take the exponent down. You now have infinity times zero. Who do you want to deal with, the reciprocal of the x or the reciprocal of the natural log? I'd rather deal with the reciprocal of the x. As far as the B, you can leave it there. You don't have to take the B underneath as well. Instead of multiplying by X, we're going to divide by 1 over X. This is of the format 0 over 0. X goes to infinity. A over X goes to 0. Natural log of 1 is 0. 0 times B is 0. Denominator 1 over X as X goes to infinity is going to 0. It is 0 over 0. We're L'Hopital already. We have arrived at the place where we can execute L'Hopital's rule. The derivative of the numerator. Keep the B, it's a constant. It's natural log of a function, so one over that function. But then times the derivative of that function, and A over X is derivative is negative A over X squared. Denominator is derivative, negative one over X squared. And as we saw in a previous video, the same action is happening. The chain rule from the numerator and the denominator conveniently cancel, not exactly to be one. If I have negative a over x squared, it's divided by negative one over x squared. It cancels to a. And our limit is a times b over one plus a over x. Simplification step. One time L'Hopital is all you need. x gets large, a over x goes to zero. One is the denominator. This limit is A times B. That's not the answer. That's the natural log of the answer. E to the left is E to the right. Your answer Y is E to the A times B. So if you ever see this limit again, you can just quote this. You can put it on the cheat sheet. This limit is E to the A times B. All right, thank you for watching. My name is Nakaya Rimmer. And I'm happy to help you through this calculus journey. And um, please reach out if you have any questions. Comment down below. Like and subscribe. And uh, that ends our series of videos on L'Hopital's Rule. I'll see you in the next video. Take care.